Greetings, everybody. Get your King James Bible. Turn to Jeremiah chapter 7. This is uh, Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is the continuation of the Jeremiah Commentary Series. Jeremiah 7 and verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Stand in the gate of the Lord's house, and proclaim there this word, and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all ye of Judah, that enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. So he's telling them to straighten up and fly right. Verse 4. Trust ye not in lying words, saying, The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. For if ye thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if ye thoroughly, thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, if ye oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods, gods, plural, to your hurt, then will I cause you to dwell in this place, in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. And, of course, the flip side of that is, just keep doing what you're doing, and I'm going to kick you out of the land that I gave you. Well, we'll see what happens here. Verse 8. Behold, ye trust in lying words that cannot profit. Will ye steal, murder, and commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense unto Baal? Baal's a name that became uh, means Lord, and it became associated with Satanism. I mean, you know, uh, what is a Messianic Jew? Do you know that the founder of the Church of Satan was a Messianic Jew? Oh yeah. Well, his his Messiah was not Jesus; it was the other guy. Yeah, his name was uh, Anton Levy. Well, his real name was Levy, 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 or is it Levy? L e v e y. But he, you know, he changed his name. Of course, they'll tell you his name was Howard Stanton, but that's a lie. They lie about everything. But seriously, he was a Messianic Jew. But his mess, his Messiah was, uh, well, you know, the other guy, Church of Satan. Yeah. So, uh, Baal, it just means Lord, but it became so associated with Satanism that uh, Lord didn't want to be called that anymore. Will you steal, murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, and burn incense unto Baal, and walk after other gods whom ye knew not? And come and stand before me in this house? Yeah. You guys going to practice Satanism and then go to church on Sunday? And come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, We are delivered to do all these abominations. Oh, yeah? Really? You think so, huh? So you're going to live like the devil... Six and a half days of the week, and then on one day you're going to go to the house of God and think that uh, he's going to forgive you for living like the devil the rest of the time? I don't think so. And come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, we are delivered to do all these abominations. Is this house 
which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes? Oh, boy. What did Jesus do to the um, den of robbers? Ah, let's take a look. What do you think? Take a look? Yeah, let's take a look. Let's take a look at Matthew 21, verse 1. And when they, Jesus and the apostles, and when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem, and were come to Bethphage, unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them, and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, yeah, if anybody says anything, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, the king cometh unto thee, meek, and sitting upon an ass, and a colt, the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way, others cut down branches from the trees, and strawed them in the way. And the multitudes that went before, and that followed, cried, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth, of Galilee. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple. Oh, boy. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. You know, if only we had somebody that cast out the money changers out of the churches or is it money collectors you know the the collectors of the tithes oh yeah those people uh tbn would be a real good start jeremiah 7 11 is this house which is called by na my name become a den of robbers in your eyes behold i have seen it saith the lord but go ye now unto my place which is which was in shiloh where i set my name at the first and see what i did to it for the wickedness of my people israel and now because ye have done all these works saith the lord and I spake unto you, rising up early and speaking, but ye heard not, and I called you, but ye answered not. Yep, the door, uh, Lord's knocking on that door, but you're not going to answer it. Hey, hey, let's pretend uh, we're not home, and maybe he'll go away, right? And I called, but ye answered not. Therefore will I do unto this house which is called by my name, wherein ye trust. Oh yeah, they trust in the house of God, but not the God of the house, I guess you could say. Yeah, you know, there's people out there today, they trust in their denomination. Mormons trust in their denomination. Not the God of Israel. Jehovah's Witnesses trust their board of directors of the Watchtower Society. Uh, Southern Baptist Trust, the Southern Baptist Convention. Independent Baptists, they trust their pastors more than they trust the Word of God. I mean, it's just the way it is. 
you know, it's sad, but you know, I don't. I bet you, if you go to a hundred churchgoers, you might be able to find two or three, maybe five people that have ever read the Bible from cover to cover. I mean, you know, how do you know what's in it if you've never read it? But it's so hard to understand. No, it's not. Get on your hands and knees and, and, and read James chapter 1. He says, ask for understanding. Ask for understanding. You know, if the door, if Lord's knocking on the door, you got to answer it. If he calls, you got to, you know, say, here I am. But people don't do that. Verse 14. Wherefore will I do unto this house, which is called by my name, wherein ye trust? Oh yeah, you trust the house, but you don't trust the Lord of the house. And unto this place which I gave to you and to your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh. And I will cast you out of my sight, as I have cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. Well, guess what? Ephraim was the chief main tribe of Israel, northern Israel, the ten tribes of the north. The Lord let them go into Syrian, Assyrian captivity. They went to captivity. They gone. The Assyrian Empire came and took them all away. Gone. Jeremiah 3.8. And Judah watched it all happen. But they think, oh, well, we got the temple of the Lord. The Lord wouldn't let anything bad happen to the temple of the Lord. You know what's interesting is that the day that the Babylonians came and destroyed the temple is the same exact day, anniversary, that the Romans came in 70 AD and destroyed the second temple. Think about it. The same exact day was the Lord sending a message. Are you listening? Jesus said, it is finished. And the veil of the temple rent from the top to the bottom, from the Lord to, the, to man. From heaven to earth, the veil ripped. The rocks were split. People rose up from the grave that had been dead and went into the city. And guess what the you-know-whos did? They probably put them to death because they didn't want you telling everybody what happened. Verse 15, And I will cast you out of my sight, as I have cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. Listen to this, people. Verse 16. This is some hard stuff. Listen to this. God speaking to Jeremiah. He says, therefore, pray not. Pray not thou for this people. Don't pray for them. Pray, thou, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. Don't you dare pray for these people. Don't you cry for them. Don't you try to make intercession for them. Uh-uh. I'm not going to hear it. I'm done. I'm finished with these people. They make me sick. Well, that's the, that's the Bob translation, but I mean, you know, listen to this language. And I think America is about uh, on the same page here. I really, really do. And not just the America, but UK and the European Union. Therefore, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, Neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. I'm not going to, you know, don't do it because I'm not going to listen. Don't waste your breath. 
Verse 17. Listen to this stuff. Seest thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the Queen of Heaven. What? They're making cakes to the Queen of Heaven. And to pour out drink offerings unto other gods, that they may provoke me to anger. What? Queen of Heaven. Guess what they, uh, the Vatican calls Mary? The Queen of Heaven. But this was like hundreds of years before Mary was even born. Who is this queen of heaven? Well, she has a number of names. Uh, Isis, Ishtar, Easter. Yes, Easter, the goddess of spring fertility. Look it up. If you've got a real dictionary, E-A-S-T-E-R, Easter. Isn't it funny that the you-know-who's favorite book is called Esther? Is that a coincidence? I don't know. Um, but also, what do the you-know-who's call her today? The Queen of Heaven. Well, there's a couple ways to spell it, but the most common that I have found is the She-Kinah. Shekinah. She-Kinah. S-H-E. K-I-N-A-H. The Shekinah, the Queen of Heaven. They made cakes to the Queen of Heaven. And they poured out drink offerings to provoke the Lord to anger. Has anything changed in a couple thousand years? Not really. Not really. If you are in a church that talks about the Shekinah being the glory of God, get out. Get out. I tell you what, do a Google search. Look up Chabad, C-H-A-B-A-D, Chabad, and then uh, type in Shekinah, S-H-E-K-I-N-A-H, -E and... Uh, well, you could also type in, what does she want from our lives? The goddess, people. The goddess. I mean, seriously. And they'll tell you, the Holy Spirit is God's wife. Yeah. Run, people. Run. Get out of there. Even if they don't know they're purposely teaching this stuff, just the fact that the Lord has not revealed uh, this abomination to them is proof that they're not led of the Spirit of God. They're under the Spirit of the other God. The Queen of Heaven, people. Shekinah. Oh, Chaplain Bob, you're being too hard on them. Oh, I tell you what. Read verse 18 again that they may provoke me to anger. If you think going to a church that teaches gross falsehood pleases the Lord, well, then just, you know, ignore me. Ignore me. I'm, you know, it doesn't matter to me. I mean, I'm just here to warn you, that's all. And what you do with it is up to you. Do they provoke me to anger, saith the Lord? Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, mine anger and my fury, my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon man and upon beast and upon the trees of the field and upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn and shall not be quenched. Argue with the Lord. Don't argue with me. 
Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Put your burnt offerings unto your sacrifices, and eat flesh. For I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice. Obey. You know, there's people today that if you obey the Lord, they will say, oh, well, you're in the Lordship salvation. They will say that in derision. Like, oh, well, you're earning your salvation. Yeah. Yeah, they want you to live like they do so that you can suffer the same fate. Jesus said, if ye love me, keep my commandments. What? Where's, where'd Jesus say that, Bob? Uh, let's take a look. Well, in the King James Bible, it's in John chapter 14 and verse 15. Jesus said, If ye love me, keep my commandments. And of course, if you run to the Seventh-day Adventists, they'll tell you, Oh, well, yeah, that, that's a Sabbath. You know, uh, oh, yeah, that's, that's a Sabbath. But was Jesus talking about the Sabbath? Really? Um, I don't think so. Well, what about Matthew 22, 36? I know I've beat this horse to death. But let's give it a couple more licks. Somebody came to Jesus and asked him, what was the most important commandment? Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law, all the law and the prophets. Well, let's face it. If you love the Lord, you're not going to worship Satan. If you love your neighbor, you're not going to commit adultery with his wife. You're not going to steal his stuff. You're not going to kill him if you love him, right? I don't read I don't I don't see anything in there about circumcision. I don't see anything in there about Sabbath keeping. Love the Lord, love thy neighbor. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So all the law and the prophets. And like Jesus said, John 14, 15, if ye love me. Keep my commandments. So, Jeremiah 7, 23. But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and ye shall be my people, and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. But they hearken not. Would they listen? No. Uh-uh. But they hearken not, nor inclined their ears, but walked in the counsels, and in the imagination of their evil heart, and went backward and not forward. Since the day that your fathers came forth, out of the land of Egypt unto this day, I have even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them. Yet they hearken not unto them, nor inclined their ears, but hardened their neck, and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, they did worse than their fathers. Oh boy. Therefore, Thou, Jeremiah, therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken to thee. 
Thou shalt also call unto them, but they will not answer thee. See, even though the Lord knows they're not going to listen to him, uh, Jeremiah, or the Lord, for that matter, he's going to tell them anyways. And then when all the bad stuff happens, they can't say, well, Lord, you never told us. You never warned us. Well, you can say that, but you're going to know you're a liar, and the Lord's going to know you're a liar. So, Therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken to thee. Thou shalt also call unto them, but they will not answer thee. But thou shalt say unto them, This is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God. I mean, you could, you could say this today about the USA, the European Union, the United Kingdom. I mean, is there any difference? No. No difference. But thou shalt say unto them, This is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction. Truth is perished and is cut off from their mouth. Cut off thine hair, O Jerusalem, and cast it away, and take up a lamentation on high places. For the Lord hath rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath. For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight, saith the Lord. They have set up their abominations in the house, which is called by my name to pollute it. And they have built the high places of Topheth, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my heart. They were burning their children alive in fire. Human sacrifice to the devils, not to the Lord. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be called Topheth, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. For they shall bury in Topheth till there be no place. There's going to be so many dead people, there ain't going to be a place to dig a grave. It's going to be full to the hilt. Yeah. It's going to be the valley of slaughter, all right. Matter of fact, I think, I'm not sure, I, I kind of suspect that the um, uh, Armageddon is going to be there, possibly the same place. I, I don't, don't hold me to that 100% because I'm not exactly sure, but it wouldn't surprise me. The Valley of Slaughter, verse 33, and the carcasses of this people shall be meat for the fowls of the heaven, and for the beasts of the earth, and none shall fray them away. Then will I cause to cease from the cities of Judah, and from the streets of Jerusalem, the voice of mirth, and the voice of gladness, and the voice of the bridegroom, and the voice of the bride, for the land shall be desolate. All right, that's the end of Jeremiah chapter 7. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.